I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. And welcome back, Megan Duhamel. Megan, welcome Hi, back Jonathan. to the skating lesson. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so we're thrilled to have you on for our Pairs Recap of the World Championships. <laughs> My dogs just like went to war with each other. Oh, very. <laughs> <laughs> just like the pairs at the event. Now, Megan, you're officially out of competition for over a year now. So watching these worlds, do you miss it? Like, What is your reaction watching it? Um, I don't miss competing at all. Like when I've watched competitions in the last year, I haven't felt like any urge once to be like, oh, I wish I was there. Um, especially when it's an event like this, like that final warm up group, four skates in a row, all so strong without any major error. I mean, that becomes so stressful for the skaters that are going on next. Um, and I just don't feel like dealing with that type of stress and nerves anymore. Um, and I mean, the sport has changed a lot in, in the way that these new GOEs have been added and stuff. And I, I just don't know how Eric and I would have fared with all those new features to do level four lifts and getting plus fives on elements. So I'm happy to leave this to the, the pairs currently competing. What's your take? Do you like the plus five minus five? Do you not like it? Um, I like it. I think that it, for people who do something exceptionally well, it gives them a great advantage. I don't believe it's being used 100% properly yet. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we're seeing, like we saw in the pairs event, some jumps that skaters landed with their hands down or on two feet and they still receive plus twos. Um, if a perfect jump is a plus five, one that includes an error should be lower than a plus two, in my opinion. So I think that there's a little bit of work to be done in deciding which GOE is for what type of element. But um, I do think it, it helps the skaters that have an exceptional element really stand out and gain a lot of points on it. Now, we saw you in a little bit engaging on Twitter today, and I just wanted to ask you about practice session protocol in your experience. So what your Canadians, Canadians are nice. If you hit someone during a run through, would you have stopped during the run through? Like, how would you have handled that situation? Oh, I mean, I can't like sustain myself. I feel like I need to like speak up in Mariah's defense, even though like I don't even really know her. I saw the video and I see the situation and I, I just feel like it's all being blown out of proportion. And when you see the video, um, something that happened to me in the past, very similar to exactly what Mariah did, was I hit my partner in the hand during a competition and he needed stitches and I didn't even know I hit him. Mm -hmm. So like, of course, if Mariah's blade nicked somebody, she just kept skating, she, but she wouldn't have known. Mm -hmm. um, and I kicked somebody on the same type of stretch and I didn't know I kicked them. So of course, the, for her not to stop immediately and be like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Well, I don't blame her. She probably didn't even know that she touched anything. Um, but then again, it was Mariah's music and it's just general etiquette in skating. When somebody else's music is playing, um, if I'm on a practice and somebody's music is playing, I'll be aware of what the person is doing to give them the right of way. So always kind of like watching my back and watching what's going on to make sure I don't happen to get in their way. Um, that's, and other people have done that for me. That's just kind of the general etiquette. Um, but you do have times where, where there's collisions. And of course this happens. We saw it with Vanessa and Macho in the short program warm up. We see it so often in ice dance. There's some bad collisions on ice dance practices, um, which are nobody's fault. It's just an accident. Um, but I think that when it's somebody else's music, it's your job to make sure you get out of the way. At the Olympics, we were practicing with the Japanese team and they were doing their solo at the exact time that Eric and I were ready to, to go through our throw quad. And we must have set up that throw quad five or six times and had to stop because the Japanese were coming near us. So we stopped what we were doing to make sure we were out of their way. So they had a clear path. So Eric and I spent so much of our practice just doing these loops again and again and again and again until their music stopped and we said, okay, now we can go. No, nope, we're not going to get in anybody's way. Um, and that, I mean, I expect that other people would have done that for me if it was my music playing. Um, and there have been times at competitions that people are like literally standing in the middle of the ice when it's your program and sometimes even watching you. Like they're... <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes
sometimes even watching you. Like I've been at competition and sometimes it's the same same people, same skaters, same teams that are kind of oblivious to what you're doing. And it's been our music and I've been setting up the, the triple lutz or our twist or something. When you're back, it, you're going backwards. So you don't see who's behind you. And many times I've had to stop because I'm about to pick and run into somebody. Uh, and that's when my own music is playing. Sometimes the skaters will say sorry to each other right there at the moment. Sometimes it's their coaches at the boards that apologize to each other. Oftentimes when there's a collision, um, the skater whose music was playing is not at fault. And the person who got in their way when their music is playing, their coach would apologize to the other coach at the boards. So sometimes it's also that. So, I mean, that's something that you wouldn't see in the video of Raf said, sorry, or, well, I guess he's the same coach, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> But you're saying it is protocol in this situation that Mariah should have made the priority to finish her one opportunity to actually yes. run that short program. Yes. It's not it's not like it's an open session or a warm up like with Matteo and Vanessa where you can stop kind mm -hmm. of reassess the situation. Mariah was kind of I have to finish the program. <clears throat> and, and I mean there's also a chance that Mariah didn't even know she hit her. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that this is the case, but I have flung my leg and whacked my partner and I didn't know I hit him until he stopped skating and I was like what's going on also Mariah if you watch her pattern in the edge she never wobbled like she couldn't have hit someone that hard to where like her edge just kept going like yeah this is Mariah Bell she's not the most powerful skater on the planet like she was going nice and, and she was turning right yeah. like she turned um in the opposite direction like she turned her back in the opposite direction of, of where where she was. And she didn't lose, I mean, she was able to do the double axle just fine, and it was just, yeah. And then they said that she didn't apologize, but did, if Ensu got off the ice to put a bandage on her leg, she might not have even been on the ice when Mariah finished the program. Yeah, so it's true too. But you know what, I've had like uh, incidences where we had to stop our music because somebody was in our way and they never said sorry to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I've been in people's way or, or gotten in somebody's way and my mind was somewhere else and I didn't say sorry to them in that moment either. It's not because I was being a bully or I was purposely hurting somebody. It's like I was so focused on what I was doing, I didn't even know what was going on. And sometimes you get that, skaters, they're in your own bubble and you're not aware of what's happening around you and those are usually the ones that get in people's way, but I mean, it could happen to anybody. Yeah. Um, the word choice I, was strange with stabbed. Think, her going out of her way to say sorry, like, I don't think that that's valid in this. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When they said well, my question, stab, oh, that was just intentionally baiting, I thought. Oh. Yeah. Well, and so my question is when something like this happens and it kind of explodes like it did and really kind of got carried away very quickly, what is something, if that had unfortunately had happened to you that you would hope Skate Canada would do. I was unsure of exactly what USFS did in this role or what they could have even done or what they could not have done. I'm, I'm just unsure what you would have felt looked like support from your federation. That's a good question. <laughs> um, if I was to venture a guess, I would think that they would suggest to me, I mean, first in Mariah's in Mariah's case, like delete my social media, don't look at my social media, whatever it is, um, to to not be in contact with this person. Like don't talk to Ensu anymore. Or don't, don't like right now. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that, I mean, Skate Canada would probably wait until the competition was finished before maybe making an announcement because they don't want to distract anybody. And that's what I find funny about the, the agency's announcement. They had to do this between the short and the long when both Mariah and Ensu should have been focusing on their upcoming competition. This was not the time to make this type of announcement. It just seems like very strange timing because it didn't only distract Mariah, it ends up distracting Ensu as well. Right. And so I it distracts Raf. It puts him in a bad mood, and he's mm -hmm. you know lacking a thing. Yeah, and they also were giving phone interviews to like further like, furthering the story. So the agency. Yeah, the agency. Yeah. So they had a press a call afterwards. So it's just. I mean, we've we've seen in in some other sports some mm -hmm. instances like this. Um, the Canadian speed skater at the Olympics in Pyeongchang, when she beat out a uh, Korean speed skater uh, for a medal in Pyeongchang. Uh, the Korean speed skater fell and Kim Butang won a medal. She was getting death threats and uh, she had to have be taken taken away and be sheltered so that she was not involved with anybody else. Apollo Ono had this incident 
um, the American speed skater getting getting threats and death threats because he he beat a Korean speed skater. So I I don't know. I just find it it very interesting and very weird. Um, kind of the history mm. in this in sport. Yeah. Mm. Well, what do you think of the actual skating? Oh wait, before we have to congratulate Eric, who is the ISU. He's going to be the. Is he the athlete representative? What is the official yeah. title? Okay. The pairs and singles athletes representative. Okay. So every sport in the ISU gets an athlete representative. This is like a new role. A new role. Uh, formerly, John Coughlin had it, and uh, so there's one for speed skating, for short track, for long track, I think. Then an ice dance one, and a pairs and singles are put together. I really believe that they should be separate. Eric should be able to be the pairs. Uh, one and Misha G should be able to take care of the singles, but the ISU has chosen to put them together. I feel like Eric would be good about that. If there are any two skaters that know the points, it would be Megan and Eric. So I and felt like it's... he knows those rules and points as much as I do, even though he doesn't talk about it as much. So I think that he'll he'll bring up some valid points to the technical committee um, and suggestions, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Oh, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting segue in because I know you have felt very strongly about the way they have devalued the throw um, quad elements and things like that for this season. And Dave and I went down a rabbit hole and kind of rewatched most of the 98 Olympics. And I started watching all of the 98 pairs as well. And suddenly you're looking at all the same throw triple sow cows and throw triple toe loops that we were kind of looking at at, at a lot of the top teams here. And I did kind of miss that element of being pushed technically where Something. it's happening in every other discipline. Yeah, Even exactly. Even quad twists, um, we used to have one or two quad twists. Shui and Han did quad twists for a decade. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we're not going to see that now with the new uh, minus five to plus five. They're going to do something that's going to gain them a higher GOE mm -hmm. because that's that's where the more most points are these days. And yeah. it's unfortunate. Yeah, my, my, one of my questions for you is what does Shui and Han work on for next year? Because they had such a gorgeous skate it was it mm. looked to be at their maximum level right now with their technical jump i mean i can't i thought that they landed maybe uh the three jump combo was kind of landed on the whole blade by Swee, but uh overall i thought that they performed as well as they could dream of so where do they get the motivation to improve for next season i mean they skated they skated so well um mm. an amazing program like everything like the mm -hmm. The layout of the program, the composition of it, the the elements, the execution, their energy and their passion. Um, I think like first, it's it's only I think the third time I've ever seen her land a triple sow. Yeah. So I think that that's still going to be on their radar of improving because they can't. You know, I I remember they landed at the 2015 Worlds and then at uh, France Grand Prix either the next year or two years later and then now. So I mean they will work on the consistency of this. I'm sure they're going to be motivated to not only land it once every year or two, but to <laughs> land it consistently in competition. Yeah. She did a good one too. It was better than it, her triple toe. Yeah. I was like flabbergasted. Did you but think so she was going to do it? Did you like shocked? Did you have that good feeling when she was skating that she was going to do it? I was kind of hoping that they would plan double sows um, and not get the fall deduction or some sort of deduction because now when you make a mistake, your components can't go as high. Mm -hmm. So I thought that it would be smart for them to try a double sow, but obviously like I'm the stupid one and that they could land a double <laughs> sow, so they should have done it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they do decide to put the quad twist back in. Um, and I guess like continue pushing to, to keep getting their levels. You know, they've got a level two pair spin and, and a few things losing levels that they can keep motivated for. Um, and we'll see if anybody, you know, over the next few years can, can come up scoring 150 plus long programs and challenge them. I think they could do the quad twist. I would think to put that in would be pretty doable for them. Do you think yeah. that the, so there was some speculation that, you know, the other Chinese team does their triple sow cows earlier and they were doing planned doubles earlier in the season. Now, Sui has struggled with sow and they did it as their sixth element. Were you surprised they did it so late in the program when they would be tired? Yes. Okay. Bruno and I were both surprised. He was like, even Bruno was like, wow, why is this jump so late? Mm -hmm. Um, they used to do it earlier and she didn't land it. So maybe she's more comfortable as they go on in the program. She doesn't even look tired when the music ends. So I don't think by the sixth element, she has any sort of fatigue. Um, maybe she's more comfortable and more confident by that point. And so she feels better about doing it later. I did find when I first saw their long program, 
um, like a video clip mm-hmm. came out of it uh, online months yeah. ago. I was like, why is their throw triple sow so early and their side by side triple sow so late? Um, I found that very confusing, but maybe they were just trying a new strategy and seeing if it helped her. And it seems to. They did have a choreographed rest in there before the side by side jumps where they were doing really beautiful choreography where they were like stretching their legs, kind of like intermixing. <laughs> and it was deceptive. Catching their breath a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they kind of. <laughs> We noticed that. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but, when you do it, but when you do it so elegantly, I really don't care. Like, yeah. for me, I thought in particular the free the free skate in general was, like, one of the finer choreographed pairs programs I've ever seen because it looked so unique unto itself. There was a, a kind of a level of sophistication and detail to it that was lacking from a lot of others. Um, mm-hmm. And just those opening moves, even in at Four Continents when I was there, like, just from her, you know, laying sideways and then kicking out, it always gets applause. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, they haven't even started like skating forward yet. And already like the audience is completely wowed by this program. I don't know, for me, it was kind of like an otherworldly moment. But I was wondering, Megan, like on her, on her triple toe, double toe, double toe, when I'm looking to see what kind of went awry for her, cause just from the outside, it just looks a little wonky. And, yes. and her and her free leg almost looked a little rappy towards the end, and I just wasn't sure if if maybe you had more insight as to what technically may be happening there. Well, I don't like, I don't know exactly like their jump technique that well, but they don't they don't land their jumps with a lot of flow. So by the time she gets to that third jump, she's pretty much at a standstill, and it's really hard when you're not a natural jumper to to get that lift and to to transfer through. Um, and I, last year or the year before they, they stopped doing the three jump combo and they started doing just triple toe, double toe to they, I think they were seeing if their GOE would be better without the third one. Um, so I know that they've played around in the past with a two jump combo or a three jump combo. Obviously they, you know, I think that they need a three jump combo should everybody skate clean. And if they miss something else, they need that 1.3 for the double toe. Um, but I think that, like, for their triple toe in the short and their triple toe combo in the long, they could be a little bit closer together, and they can they can cover a little bit more ice so that there's more running edge on their landings. Okay. Yeah. Well, but I really like their program, too, and I think that what makes Shui and Han so such a good pair and what's always made them a good pair, even since those days where they did the cowboy number where he was, like, last suing in the death spiral, <laughs> they were always so committed. Mm-hmm. It didn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter what program they have. They have 110 percent commitment from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, and it doesn't matter what's happening with the elements. Mm-hmm. They are given it everything they've got, the entire program, and that's what allows their programs to evolve and to like kind of blossom the way that they do. Well, and it doesn't seem forced or like taught to them. It seems very organic. Like I wrote in the short program, I said they have synchronized emotions on the step sequence. <laughs> and, but it seems like it's coming from inside of them in such a real way that to see them both do it is Well, pretty... it's that courage that Lori Nichol was talking about. She was letting us... Yeah. Like... She yeah, was right. right. You know, she could say anything she wants. She was crying after the free program. And I just thought, you know, if you can keep doing that for pairs, like cry away, Lori. Enjoy your spot on the kitchen. Well, I think part of their commitment comes from Lori's commitment to them. She's always been extremely committed and loyal. And she goes and works with them in China. And she loves it when they come to work with her, when the Chinese pairs come to work with her. So, I mean, she's she's giving them and feeding them, I think, that passion and commitment towards their programs. But I do find it funny every time they do a press conference and Shui's like, I hate this music. Because when she skates, she doesn't look like she hates the music. <laughs> so exactly. she's a really good actress. <laughs> she's, a tr- she's a character. She always has really funny quotes at the press. She's so funny. Both of them are. Yeah. And apparently she was speaking Japanese in the press conference and nobody like realized it. She was doing it as a joke. Oh. oh. <laughs> they're, they're, they're really funny uh, characters, those two. Now, what did you think for, and I will say that you would always say that if Sui beat you, you were okay with it. When you competed as competitive as you were, you always appreciated her. Yeah, I mean, I've always like been a fan of them. And I mean, even when they did that cowboy number, my mom loved them. So my mom would ask me at every competition, is the cowboy team going to be there? And I was like, mom, they always beat me. Why do you want them to be at my competition? (laughs) She just loved their energy and their performance level and, um, it was always really funny and 
I mean, we were, Eric and I were like adults, you know, and 10 years ago and we were like, oh, these little kids just keep beating us, but they're just so cute. We used to always like come off a podium and, and be saying stuff like that. And I mean, they're such great skaters and they've improved their, their level of performance and their skating all the time. And uh, we've always admired that. And we really loved it when they did all the, the quad twist and the throw quad because that's what we wanted to do. So they motivated us in that way. Now, did you watch the Aliona documentary recently that was on TV? And you know, I saw somebody post a link of it and I haven't watched it. Is it in English? There are subtitles. Yeah. Okay. I read some quotes from it, like different <laughs> quotes from, from her and from Robin and from Bruno and from <laughs> um, Daniel Weiss and some people in, in that <laughs> documentary team, but I haven't watched the full thing. Did you know that they were not best friends when they were skating? Um, Robin and yeah. her? Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume that, like, knows that. Yeah. <laughs> that was the best is that you see her. <laughs> she didn't seem that much scarier than Deanna, though, when they were on. Um, you know, I didn't know Aliona that well. Like, when she competed with Robin, I would see her at competitions, but, like, she was always winning, and I was, like, the middle of the pack, so I didn't, like, and she didn't really talk to anybody um, much during that time. And Eric trained in Germany with her and Robin. And he used to say, like, Aliona just comes to the rink and then she leaves and she doesn't really socialize with people. Um, and then when she started skating skating with Bruno, she her character just completely changed. And she became really chatty and friendly at competitions. And it was like a whole new person. And I think her skating really grew when she did that, as, when she kind of became lighter as well. Her husband knows all about skating too. Like she's really trained him. It's impressive. So he like he came in knowing nothing, and he does know a lot. He's a really really nice guy. He's one of the the nicest people that you'd ever meet. Yeah. Okay. So Tarasova Morozov. First of all, I was happy to see Elton John back because we haven't seen her through most of the season. I felt <laughs> no. I, look, I've never had her talk to me from a viewer. I was really happy to see her. She's. <laughs> expressive and exciting um she was really happy at these worlds she yeah. was like showing some happiness there in the kiss and cry someone was saying that she's not around because maybe she has love in her life and there's someone like involved in skating and she can't i don't know but okay i don't i don't know anything about her so well, I, I hope that that is true for her yes <laughs> how about that okay. so tarasa morozov they have been skating really consistently for themselves, I have to say. They were always a team that when they were go for the harder elements, there would always be a crash in the program. Um, I kind of thought that this was going to be their moment at these worlds until Sui and Han were just so exquisite here. What is your take on their skate, their skating? You know, what's going on here? Well, I think definitely when they finished their free skate, mm -hmm. they thought that they did it. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt, like when they hit that ending position, they were like, finally, we did it and we're going to mm -hmm. win um, this this major event. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that when they saw the score, uh, they second they second guessed those thoughts and realized that that score may not be enough. Um, but I mean, I think it's like the first clean short I've seen them do all season. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, the GOEs showed a clean long program, even though there was a few errors on the side by side jumps. Um, but it was nice to see them like happy when they finished their free skate because we've seen them be extremely disappointed competition after competition the last uh, last season and um, at the Grand Prix final and Europeans this year. So it was nice that that they could have a great skate for themselves. Were you surprised by how high the marks were in the short? I mean, I thought that they skated well, but I thought towards the end of the program they got out of sync on the spins, and it just looked like the program was starting to come apart. Bruno is telling me. No, he thinks that they deserved their scores. He just gave me a thumbs up. Well, Bruno, I thought that their spins <laughs> lacked synchronicity. When Tarasov and Morozov uh, execute all of their elements, that nobody else in the world has elements like them. I agree that they do have the best but, elements. But it's my favorite. Look, um, who said that? Sandra Bezik. She's like, but the, and the program only counts if everyone skates clean. Yeah. So when everyone skated clean, the program counted. It and it was the wrong on enough program that, yeah. you know, it's a better style for them. Um, Although that ending from a musical standpoint is utterly inexcusable. <laughs> and they, they just like loop a final like 10 seconds at the end. And then it just goes. Rrr, rrr. Yeah. Don't you find that like, music cuts of some people? It's, it seems like it would be something so easy to fix. And maybe like you guys. Some skaters on. just have terrible music cuts and they never make the changes. 
we especially for the farmers from Elton John, yeah. though, by their yeah. own standards. So that's true. That's true. <laughs> so I think I think that um, as they have, they're so great. Uh, Tressa and Morozov are such a, a great classical team. They have when they execute their elements, they are top notch. Nobody does a better twist or better throws. Or when they land the triple toe in the short, very well done. Um, things are very well done, but I think that. You know, the thing that they need to continue working on is, is the facial expression. They don't really look at each other at all when they skate. They're they're never stopping and interacting with each other. Um, when the music is, is slow and classical, their facial expression is the same as when it was Candyman. Um, I think that they need to find their interpretation skills a little bit more. If I was them going into next season, that's what I would put my focus on. She never looks happy when she's skating. No. But you know what? Off the ice, she's a very happy girl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and that's the strange thing. Like, she is pleasant and smiling at people off the ice um, more than, than some other skaters are. So that that's what's strange. I, I don't know if she's just nervous or she's been taught to interpret like that. I don't know. Okay, Megan, let's talk it out. How much did you love or hate the statistics? Loved it. Okay, because when I saw the statistics on Tarasova and Morozov, when it was like a meter and a half off the, I don't know what it was. Yeah. It was like it was like in the stance. I think theirs were the stats on the throw that probably surprised me the most. Like because they look like big beautiful throws, but when you really see the numbers up there, you're like, oh, like legitimately, like officially, that's a great throw. I found it very interesting with the throw tracker. Also, was. Um, when you have people doing a throw flipper lutz, it's a toe throw. So it doesn't get the same launch and amplitude as an edge throw, like a sour loop. But what we saw was that mostly the ones who did the throw flipper lutz reached uh, a higher height than any of the sour loops, but their speed was slower and um, the the other uh, the other factor was slower. But the actual height of their throw, ended up being higher usually than the sows and loops. I just, I found that very interesting. And there were some people that I was like, oh, they have the best throw. And mm-hmm. then when their their thing came up, it was like only 13 uh, kilometers an hour, whereas some of them had, had 16, 17, 18, 20. And I was yeah. like, oh, like to my eye, I thought that those people had the best throw in the world, but I was wrong. I have to say, I really appreciate it for the pairs. I obviously they did it at Japanese nationals and in singles, everyone is about the same. So it's not that big of a difference. It wasn't that impressive well, to me. And and they choose one jump to do it on. So like yeah. everyone here, it was only the double axle. So everyone's double axle was basically in the same ballpark. But if they were doing it for different jumps, I think it could be more interesting. But the I throws were fascinating. Wait. Even yeah. like the throws, I was really, I was given some side eye at some teams. I was like, hmm, we didn't get to a meter, you know? That was... <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, you know who had really high numbers? The second um, Italian team who who placed maybe some 18th or 19th, okay. but their throw Lutz in the short, her rotation and her height, those numbers sustained throughout the whole event. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that was really interesting. It was a really powerful throw Lutz, but you don't think of, of kind of a, a team at that level to have, you know, amongst the best throw in the world. And they their numbers were amongst the best ones. Yeah, which was which was really cool to see. I just said the the sound effect for um I have um I have this new thing I got for my birthday where it's just like if you lose your keys it like makes a sound and I always sit on it by accident and it makes like a sound like if so you don't lose your keys so you don't lose your keys or your phone and it makes the same noise on that K scope or whatever it's called <laughs> so the eye scope yeah. whatever it is so I, yeah. I think it was really cool I hope yeah. that that more more countries can incorporate this or more TV stations. Like but like it. you said, Megan, I think for different elements, like a twist or the sci-fi twist sci-fi would be really know. interesting. I think the yeah. twist height. Show yeah. us like, the ice coverage and the speed of rotation in the lift. I don't know. They can use it for so many elements. Super now, cool. I'm curious watching it. And again, we're watching some of this stuff late at night. Like in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> in the middle of the <laughs> night, like taking my melatonin, but punk and gin to me, I kind of thought they had the bronze medal over Zabiaco and Enbert. I, I did as well. There's something I, about the quality that they land their I, elements with, their stretch on the lifts. She has stronger yeah. body positions to me. And Zabiaco, as much as I like them, they, they're they very tall, but like, I, it's like 
wilty. Like they're kind of like a willow tree to me a little bit. Like they're just... There's something endearing about Peng and Jin. There's something light and flowy and endearing. And when they did that triple sow, like talk about another triple sow by a Chinese pair team. Like where did that come from? Um, when they landed it, I was like, oh, they've got the bronze. And I was so happy for them. But of course, I wasn't expecting <laughs> the next three teams to have such amazing long programs. Um, but I, I really do enjoy Peng and Jin. And, and I think they maybe should have scored a little higher in the short. I think that I um, they should have been closer to the top two in the short than they were. Um, I think that they have the best short in the world this year. So I think that it, it should have been a little bit closer. Yeah, I've really, I've, I've, they've really grown on me this year to where before they were always just a nice team to watch, but now they've seemed to really become quite a strong, credible team among the top. I'd like, I'd I'd like do more character driven programs maybe for free skates because their short is so great and she has like such a great personality. But then when they do slower classical music for the free skate, you, she doesn't shine as much. So I, I hope that next year they decide more character driven free skate. And I wonder if Lori thought this was even like a risk, like testing the waters of this. Like they, it's very possible they didn't expect it to be the big runaway hit that it kind of was for them. Yeah. I, and it just brings out such a nice quality to just end a program and just feel nice. And and yeah. their triple loop was so nice and everything was just so delightful. In the um, free skate, I'm obsessed with their throw triple loop entrance. Like, and the thing about it's yes I like Lori whatever but like she doesn't do much in pairs so it's just a little bit when you when you see these kinds of transitional or linking elements they're just kind of innovative and fresh because we haven't seen so many versions of them so me as like um, an observer I'm just clued in a little bit closer because each thing is a little bit more of a surprise than I'm used to I think Mm -hmm. so I, I just really enjoy watching them I I did like I did think they had the bronze and I was a little bit sad that they didn't get the bronze. But I mean, when when Zabiako and Embert do a clean long, I mean, it it just comes down to preference from from the judging panel. Right. And and maybe a few levels. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And the rotation of Ping's Sao did get an under rotation. So that may have been the difference also. Yeah. So Vanessa and Morgan, I had to ask you, you've been in a position where you've won everything all year before. How long did it take you to learn how to compete and adjust at that level to where you now you're competing for first as opposed to just trying to medal? Like how different of a mindset is it? It is a very different mindset. Mm-hmm. The thing is when we had that the season where we won our first world title after Sochi, when we were undefeated and we won everything that year, um, everything was so light and easy. Our goal was just to be happy when we got off the ice. We didn't ha- set the goal of winning. Um, and we're, every competition was important to us. So by the time we got to Worlds, it was just as important as Skate Canada was or the Grand Prix Final was or Nationals was. Um, and we treated it as such. But then the next year, we became scared to lose because it was like, oh, my God, like, we should win everything. We should just always be winning. And then we came second once, and it was like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Okay, like, life will go on, and second is still good. Um, but it is an adjustment. And they've skated both their programs clean almost all season. So it's really hard to find the motivation within yourself um, of what else you're going to reach for. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're just trying to repeat what, they've always, what they did. And that's not the right mindset. You always want to be striving to, to do something better and to improve something. Um, and, and I think that maybe, I don't know, but maybe, maybe they, they became a little bit too uh, interested in winning. Whereas all season long, I think they were really just committed to performing these amazing programs and enjoying the moment and like they always have. And all of a sudden now their expectations change a little bit. And how much do you think that collision rattled them? Honestly, honestly, because I don't know. Because it's a hard, it's a hard guess because Vanessa went out there at the beginning of the short and, you know, she was great. She did the great Mm -hmm. twist. She did the triple toe. It was Morgan that was off. Yeah. So, I mean, possibly Morgan was distracted by what happened. Um, we we saw Macho maybe distracted too. He missed his jump yeah. right there. Macho and, and Nicole tough. skated yeah. first. They didn't have time to re- like reset themselves. Um, I've never had like a collision on a six minute warm up, so I don't really know like how I would have reacted in in such a situation. But I'm fairly confident that their coaching team would have taken them backstage and 
and tried to reset like reset them mentally and you're just going back out there and everything is starting over again and calming them down um and i think that vanessa did get back to to a good focus point and morgan struggled a little bit more yeah i wonder too seeing how strong the other teams were here if that was a little harder to coming in because they were on such a roll they had so many competitions back to back to back to back to back yeah. and then they have almost like a two-month break and they're here and now all the other teams look really strong where earlier in the season there was more inconsistency at play and too. you know what this is absolutely true and it happened to eric and i um in 2017 shui and han didn't do the grand prix circuit um and they just showed up at four continents and worlds so because they hadn't skated all year when we were going to four continents we we're like oh they're not going to be ready they're going to be out of shape like whatever like we're still going to have a chance to win and then we got there and on our first practice all of a sudden like they have these amazing programs they're doing everything and it was like oh my god where did that come from what happened we weren't expecting that and it distracted us and we had a terrible competition um so i mean it is possible that vanessa and morgan have like kind of had an easy ride this year nobody's been performing that well except for them um and then all of a sudden they got to worlds and there's a buzz about Shui and Hans free skate and the Russians are back and they have Nina or Elton <laughs> they're back with their coach and well, you know like this Vanessa and Morgan would have felt that and would have seen that and for sure it could have affected them and they're not known as a GOE team they're more going for the big the moment the big picture everything yeah yeah, yeah. so so not but I mean talk about unfortunate though because after the season that they've had, like who could have expected them to, to miss two elements in the short at uh, Worlds? And I do think that their programs are so iconic and they were so current and it was going to be such mm -hmm. a moment if, if, if it had all fallen in line, which unfortunately yeah. it didn't. Um, my question to you is when I'm watching a throw triple flip, right, which is wh where it went awry for them um, in the throw at the short, and I, I don't know who I'm looking at to kind of figure out what happened. I don't know if this is the sort of thing where it's appropriate to look for blame in a pair at any point because it's an equal thing, but mm -hmm. if how one knows if that's coming from the release of the man, like was this technically maybe still Morgan who was rattled or is this now, does it always have to fall to the woman to save that landing or, or what's your take on that? Um. I mean, you're right. It, it's not anybody's point to to point blame, and a throw involves two people. You have to both do your job. Um, I think it's possible that after missing the toe, and then Morgan was a little off uh, at the beginning of their their spin after I think or their desperate whatever element came next. I think that they approached that throw Lutz, and there's something in the back of your mind going, "Oh my God, we can't miss this. We already made a mistake. Can't miss this." So you start overthinking what you're gonna do, and you can see that. Their throws usually go um, more up, at, like more high than across, but that one really just like exploded up and down and she had no flow when she came out at all. Um, I think it, it could have been a little bit of overthinking because the mistake had already happened. A little bit of a timing issue. If, if Morgan was feeling a little bit anxious or, or maybe pissed off at his, at his double toe um, and Vanessa trying to maybe overdo it a little bit. So I think it's, it's a little bit of everything. Um, okay. But I definitely know that once you've made one mistake in the short in pairs and you're going for, usually it's the jump first and the throw and you're going for that throw, there's a lot of pressure on that because you cannot miss another thing. Mm. Right. Okay. And I, I, that's what I sense happened. So I will tell you that you probably don't even remember this, but at some event, it must have been autumn. Did you go to the autumn classic? Yeah. Oh, well, okay. So I think you took a video of Kirsten and you said, Beth, best outside death spiral. And at the time I was like, that's so random, but so Megan, best outside death row. I have watched her death spiral in the short all season now. And I'm like, best outside death spiral all, all year. <laughs> it is. So. But you know why? Because she has a really nice position and mm. Kirsten has open hips. Like mm. she can do spready goals and she has really open hips. So her position in the back outside death spiral, her left hip is so open and she's so balanced that she really opens up to the left and like rotates her core. And it's so nice. Like when they do it, it's a it's a beautiful death spiral. And she had a nice position when she did it with Dylan as well. Um, and sometimes the key with a really great element, uh, like a really great death spiral or spin, like one of those pair elements, sometimes what also makes them great is the timing that they have within the program or with the music. Um, if it's not really highlighted within choreography or music, it could become forgettable. Mm -hmm. um, if you choose to do it at center ice on a musical highlight, 
at the right time in the program, then the element becomes more memorable. And I think that, you know, you saw in the short program, I, a handful of teams got level four mm. and they were one of them. Not many people got level four Despero on that short. And so her- can I ask a question about the, the male part of this? <laughs> As yeah. I'm like, be smarter, Jonathan. Like for instance, <laughs> when we saw uh, Vanessa and Morgan do theirs, you really saw Morgan kind of spotting and kind of almost creating sort of angular turns, whereas yeah. some just seem to flow so much more naturally. Like, what's happening there? I, I, assuming we're striving for a much more natural kind yes. of arc to it, because sometimes I think even at US Nationals, I saw a lot of people like clock this direction, then that direction, and it became really distracting. Some people like to spot in a death barrel, which which would kind of be what, what you're talking about. Some people use it to create momentum and to create a little bit of whip in the death barrel. That's what so I wonder. At okay. the end, when the guy is losing speed, you might see him do that just so he could finish maybe a quarter of rotation before okay. uh, to get the level or something okay. like that. Um, I do think in the short at Worlds, like Morgan like slipped uh, mm-hmm. going into the death barrel. So he lost some balance there already. Um, okay. When Mike goes into a pivot, it just kind of accelerates. Hmm. Uh, and he's one that doesn't really need that that type of checking and spotting. Eric always spotted in a death spiral. He always maintained flow, but also spotted. So, I mean, it, it depends on... And it's, like, it's, like, it's, it's, spot. it's when the spotting doesn't maintain that flow on the bottom half. That because it, they're it, trying it sort of to create something okay. uh, and trying to hold the death spiral longer. Okay. Fair so enough. it may not end up being the prettiest, but maybe they're going to get a level three instead of a level two or something. Okay. Now, why yeah. wasn't Bruno at the Worlds? We like to watch Bruno at the side of the boards <laughs> at the Worlds. Where was he? You know, everyone likes to see him. Why wasn't he there? <laughs> well, we were watching from home. Um, <laughs> on, uh, the, the Federation only pays for one coach to go to competitions. Oh. So because Kirsten and Mike were the only pair team, okay. uh, there was only one coach, and that's Richard. Gotcha. So that that's what happens. Like um, at the Olympics in Sochi, Bruno could not come with us. The Canadian Olympic Committee only allowed us one coach. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I paid for Bruno, and he had to watch from the stands as a spectator. Um, that's the way that it is. I mean, I, I always find it so unfortunate because all the other countries they seem to be able to have two or three, and they get, you know, like the the Chinese even got to have Lori there and their two coaches. Um, but that. That's not the way it works. Who in was the Canada. young guy with the Chinese team? The younger guy. Who was Yeah, that? he's new in their coaching team. I don't really know him. I didn't know him. I was like... No. I like that he ran up and just started team. hugging everyone. Yeah, he was super happy and yeah. seemed like he had a good energy. I would be happy too. They won the Worlds. I mean, yeah, come on. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, Kirsten seems like she has her mojo coming back. Have you noticed that she seems more calm? It reminds me more of when she competed against you and Eric when she was with Dylan. Like, she seems a little more confident growing. Well, I've only, like, I only seen them in competitions. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this season they've had a few really, really great competitions and then a few mm-hmm. shaky competitions. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like part of the confidence Mm -hmm. in in a team like this or in any team, um, you have to be, you have to have like kind of the mileage in Mm -hmm. your training. So when a program is new and you're, you're thinking through it, like at the beginning of a season, you don't often see, you don't often see these like empowering commanding skates, but as, as the team gets more comfortable and more confident in their training and in their program, they start to excel and execute things better. Not because their technique is better. It's just because they feel more confident and comfortable. And I think that having a few good competitions under their belt probably feeds her fire a little bit. Like, okay, like I'm, I'm in contention again. Well, and it's a, it's a, it's a bit it's a unfortunate, bit. and I know that this just must happen in pairs and, you know, ice dance and things like that, but she really did deliver a phenomenal <laughs> world's performance that didn't necessarily match that of her partners. And, and mm-hmm. it, it was sort of tough to see her processing very human emotions in the kiss and cry when she kind of thought to herself, like, wait, I, I felt good. Like, yeah. I, I, I did my job. And I understand that Michael, unfortunately, didn't in this instance, but that I hope that there is a takeaway because she did nail it. Like, she, she had I'm such a curious. moment. This just happens sometimes where you're both not on the same page. And yeah. I think um, I think for Mike, sometimes he gets really excited to compete. Like, he'll be so pumped up. And 
I remember before Canadians last year, the Olympic qualification, every day he was like, oh my God, are you excited? Canadians is coming, gonna qualify for the Olympics. And I was like, I don't know, like I'm not as excited as you are. <laughs> excited. And then it was like, okay, like I like we need you need to calm down or else you might not harness this energy well. So I think that and he did, obviously, because they skated really well. But I think in an instance like the long program, when they find themselves in a good place after the short, he gets excited. He yeah, wants yeah. it so bad that he, he gets excited and overdoes it. And what he ended up overdoing it on in this instance was his jumps. Sometimes he gets that excitement on the lifts and loses control a little bit. Um, but I, I mean, all three lifts in their long program, Mike did very well. He was in good control of those. It was and I just love the dismounts. The I excitement love the dismounts of the jumps. Of mm -hmm. To me, it looks like he might've been high in his knees and high in his shoulders and the takeoff. I think he gets excited, that's how he reacts. Yeah, he just looked like, kind of goes. it just kind of looked like high. Up. His like timing when he went to pull back on his arms. I was like, oh, okay. Um, no, I want. It's not a bad thing that he wants it that badly. It's just yeah. harnessing that energy on how to execute with the adrenaline rush that they must have been experiencing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, how about Kane and Leduc? I want to ask you. Okay. It's Friday in Lent. We have to be good Catholics here. <laughs> okay, I'm not you... Catholic. Okay. Did you think that her triple either. loop was around in the short? I didn't think it was around, but the collar was Troy. And... You know what? Yeah, well. Um, but you know what happened? In the short, her fall distracted me from all thought of rotation. Okay. Um, yeah. And they didn't replay. Sometimes I wanted them to replay some of the tight jumps, and they weren't. And I didn't, I didn't know if they were doing that because they thought they were being gracious about not you know, doing that. But of course, that's yeah. what we all need to see because we're like, well, was that around or was that not? And yeah. we had to then watch, depending on what um, element they were showing the, you know, statistics on. Yeah. Then it, for some people, it was a, an icky element. And I was like, now we have to watch it. They were icky throw five times in a yeah. row. If, like, to see the same numbers over and over again. Exactly. From every but, you know, I didn't, I didn't question the rotation in the short because it was just like, did she like hit her cheek on that fall? Because that was a hard fall. Um, so for, for that, I... I wouldn't have an answer for you. They often it's struggle like, with the rotation. I don't know how she got up and landed a throw like right away, like nothing happened. That girl's a really tough girl. Mm -hmm. And then she got off the ice and not saying like, oh, I'm in pain. She was like, oh, I'm so pissed off. I missed it. <laughs> like, I like that attitude. <laughs> now, how do, you, how do you evaluate their throws? Because she gets a lot of height on her throw, but then she lands kind of in like a deep knee bend, deep squat. So how yeah, would you? Pretty, pretty almost consistently, wouldn't yeah. you say? I feel like every throw has kind of landed in that forward, forward. Not at US Nationals though. I think it was US Nationals that she really like hit some nice landing positions. They had a great skate at US Nationals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think what, what sometimes maybe, maybe happens with their throw lots is it gets that same uh, type of up and down as Vanessa and Morgan. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, you don't have like the soft running edge on your way out. So you're working it a bit more. Um, that used to happen a lot to me on my throws too. Eric and I's throws went up and down. They didn't have like this long ice coverage. And I also landed very deep in the knee and, and had to had to adjust to how create a running edge instead of a running edge being there already. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes that's what Ashley experiences. Um, but I don't mind the deep knee bend. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I. I don't mind that. I think it's nice. Just maybe like finding a way to straighten the back a little bit more. What would um, you give it? Like a plus two? Like how do you? Like the one in the short, for example. Yeah. Day? Like how much should we be deducting? Yeah. On the. Yeah, I'd say I'd say it's a solid plus. That was a solid plus two throw lutz. There was no error. Yeah. Um, but when you're comparing it to the plus five of mm -hmm. Teresa Van Morozov and Shween Han, mm -hmm. um, it was lacking a little bit of flow on the landing, and the the posture wasn't that great on the landing. So I'd say. I would judge it as a solid plus two. Good, we're in sync. Okay, so how about what else were your big impressions? Are the North Koreans going to get new programs for next oh, season? Oh, we hope that they will. Yeah. Um, it's been three years of that same short. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, this year now, mind you, at Worlds, it was a completely different program to mm -hmm. the same music. They had a brand new footwork sequence and some brand new transitions throughout, but they decided to keep the music. Um, and their coach is the one who choreographed that. So their coach is capable of, of choreographing programs very well. Um, 
I mean, I, I hope that they would decide to come back and to train with Bruno again. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, when they had a chance to qualify for the Olympics, they had a little bit more funding uh, mm -hmm. that allowed them to come to Canada for two months or almost three months, which wasn't the case this year. So we'll see if hopefully eventually they can. But I think that they skated well. Um, they haven't competed much this year. They didn't go to four continents. So they got a bad early draw in the short. Um, so they need to compete more to improve their world standing. And I also think they need to compete more because they learn about their levels when they compete. They learn what like what doesn't count and what does count. And they just keep themselves in the judges' eyes and the skating eyes. And that allows their that allows their skating to improve and their impression on other people to to keep growing. Now, where were and the they, Australians? Why were the Australians not there? They were injured or something. Okay. One of them was injured. Okay. Now, and this is probably an ignorant question. When we have that triple toe loop, double toe loop, double toe loop, okay, yeah. is this not so risky? This, this works, I'm assuming, the exact same as it does in singles. So then when Vanessa turns out and does a double toe, double toe, double toe, what is it they're getting credit for? Double toe, All double toe, them. double toe. In pairs, you can get credit for as many. You don't need. You don't have a limit on the repeated double jumps. So Vanessa got credit for all three double toes. Okay, that's what I was wondering because it looked. Yes. I, I I wasn't quite sure how they were doing that, but okay. Yeah. So in pairs, right. it's not the same rule as in singles with that. Okay. And I know from experience because I've often popped my triple toe when I did the three jump combo. So I knew that you do get credit for all three double toes. So keep going. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You just keep adding those one point threes. Should the teams okay. do the double? Time. Should the teams do the double loop as the third jump to get more points? Is it not worth it? it? I mean, it is more points, but it's barely more. And in fact, I think it's harder. But I do find it so impressive that Zabiako and Ember do it so well because it's yeah. different than what everybody else is doing. Um, and it has a little a different lift. Um, but it's like, for what, 0.2 more, 0.3 more? It's a big risk. How about, do you miss still Bova doing the triple toe, triple toe under that would get counted as clean? Like, Plus <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, that was exciting to see a team trying yeah. a triple toe, triple toe. Remember when Vanessa and Morgan for a year or half a year tried triple toe, triple toe? Um, and they're capable of it. I think it's exciting when you have a team that's doing this element. It's like when I watch Nathan Chen. I'm like, oh, my God, what's he going to do? There's so many quads. Is he going to do them all? There's a sense of excitement. I think, um, I think that when she and Han are doing their triple sow, it's like, oh, my gosh, like what's going to happen? It's exciting. And they landed it. I was so excited more than you know, anybody else who lands triple sap. We need to push for Eric to bring the quads back. I think it hurts Vanessa and Morgan to not be going for the harder element. I think that that, they need something to kind of. I think that, that what devaluing the quad twist and the throw quads did is that everybody's doing the same things now. Mm -hmm. That everybody's... they did in 98, some of yeah. them. Yeah. I can't believe we're still watching throw triple sows in 1992 or 88, <laughs> like, the champions yeah. did triple sows. Yeah. Um, of course, they're different now. Some of them are doing difficult exits and difficult entries and different quality, but it's still nice to see people having these kind of unique elements, uh, whether it's a quad twist, whether it's a throw quad, whether it's a triple toe, triple toe combination. Um, Kirsten and Mike uh, last year were doing the double axle half loop triple sow. It's exciting to see somebody do something different and it makes you stand out. And I think in a short program, if a team did like Ashley Kane and Tim, they stand out if they would land their triple loop in the short. Mm -hmm. It's something different that nobody else is doing, and it puts them in a little bit of a different league than, right. than some other teams. Um, and that's what our triple lets did, and I, I just wish that the system would reward these type of things more than they are right now. And that's what it would take for me to kind of be interested to watch Boykova and Kozlowski, I think, again. Would oh, need to be love a, them? I, I love need a unique them. element. I think they have a lot of potential, though. Excited. I like them better than Zabiaco because I feel like their quality is stronger. They don't have the personality yet, but I feel like... I don't know. I feel like she's a really strong pair girl when I watch That's her. a team that I... Like, maybe they're going to come out next year with a triple toe, triple toe or something. They're both such and strong And that jumpers. would make me look it, at them in a totally different way. It yeah. could be possible. Um, I think Tamara can do, like, some more unique choreography with them. You know, we've seen her, like, have different type of character programs and very full with transitions and movements um, where this team didn't have, doesn't have that yet. They're just fresh mm. into seniors. They're not there yet. So maybe that's something she can add, but I love them. And I think that they have a big future.
Mm. Do, you, do you remember in The Sound of Music when they do the um, singing competition <laughs> and the Von Trapp yeah. family wins and blah, yeah. blah, blah? There's the woman that wins third prize or third place or something. And it's this small joke in the movie that a lot of people forget. And she just keeps bowing. Yeah. And she never leaves the stage. So she's just like, third prize, third prize. And she just <laughs> never leaves and keeps bowing. And that was a little bit how they were at the end of the short program. I think it was so endearing to see them feel so good about it. <laughs> and they literally never stopped bowing. I think they were out there the longest. I think <laughs> so that's kind of Canada adorable. too. It was like a similar situation. They had a really great free skate at Skate Canada and they got a, a big standing ovation and they were just like milking the moment. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is going on in the pit world? Do you think that we will see um, Stobova back next year competing? I mean, maybe at Russian Nationals or Russia Cup or something. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's so, so many strong pair teams in Russia. Even a couple junior deep. ranks yeah, yeah. that will, like the world junior champions that will now go into senior. Um, I mean, you have to be exceptional just to qualify to get out of that country. Now, and, how excited are you for Canadian pairs now that we have Luba and Charlie skating together? That... Well, see how they, I haven't seen them, so yeah. we'll see how they turn out. But I think it's really exciting. It adds another team that, that will likely be able to be a top 10, top 8 team, top 6, whatever in the world eventually. Um, I think that... With the new GOE, uh, the new GOEs, they're going to be able to rack up a lot of points on big twists and cool lifts and nice throws. Um, so I like, I don't see her jumping consistencies being that big of a problem at the beginning because they're going to be able to do plus five el elements. And now you need that plus five twist. I don't know if you noticed, like if you don't have an explosive plus four, plus five twist in the short, you're out of the game. Mm, you yeah. need that. And I think that a, a team like Charlie is so strong, and um, and Lubov has, you know, she kind of brings a little bit of technique, a different technique, and I think that they're going to be able to, to have kind of those explosive elements. Um, that they announced that, who that could with? that could allow them to like um, offset the weaker jumps. Have they announced Dave who they're going to be coaching with? They haven't. They're supposed to have a media day in April. They said after the Worlds. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I was wondering what you thought about the fall. We saw a lot of side-by-side -side doubles during the Chinese would go for the side-by-side -side double salad. Like on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Is that something Luba would consider for the short, at least until they have more mileage as a team? Because I feel like they I could doubt be competitive. It because I mean, that's going to hurt your components. Mm -hmm. It's like doing a double twist in the short. Like if, if a senior team did that, it doesn't matter how great your program is. It's going to hit you on the overall impression. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe with a different atmosphere and a different partner, she's going to have a better time landing jumps. Mm -hmm. It's not that she can't land them. We have seen from time to time that, that she does. It's just extremely inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, it's a lot to do with mentally, um, not so much physically. So now what jumps are you doing in Japan? We know that you're going to Japan on <laughs> Sunday. Um, I couldn't <laughs> no. believe that you weren't at the Worlds, but we know that you're training even though you had neck problems and a bunch of stuff. So what stuff are you doing in shows? Well, I was like barely training this week because Eric's at Worlds. Okay. Um, I would have loved to go, but I like, I didn't have an opportunity. I would have had to like spend my own money to go there. So I chose to, to stay home. Um, I mean, we do a throw triple sow in our show number. I don't really do that many jumps. <laughs> we, we got two, uh, two new programs done that like, they're not really re like a hundred percent ready yet, but hopefully they'll be okay enough to perform in Japan. They're brand new. <laughs> um, uh, Jeff Buttle did one and, and Julie did another. So like a lot of like cool new little moves and stuff, but uh, just a throw triple sow. <laughs> now, how much are you jumping now compared to tour? Cause you were really doing a lot in every- Not much. Like I didn't even skate throughout January because I was so exhausted. Um, that tour was so long. And then in December we did shows like all over America and in Italy. Um, so in January, I didn't skate at all. And then we kind of halfway through February started, uh, getting back on the ice and just doing a little bit. So, and we, we were doing the throw triple lutz in the thank you Canada tour because we were doing our short program to with or without you. And it was like, it was super stressful every night because we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to skate well. And anything that becomes your high, like if I was only doing a double toe, all of a sudden I'd probably start getting nervous about a double toe. In a competition, I was never nervous about the throw LUTs. I was nervous about all the other hard stuff, but all of a sudden 
on tour, it was the hardest thing we were doing. So it kind of became really stressful. And after the tour ended, I said, I don't think I want to do any more throw lutzes and shows. It's too stressful. I want to be relaxed when I do a show. Yeah, exactly. Have fun. So we said, okay, we're going to do throw triple sows. <laughs> Will you get stressed with the throw triple sow or do you think you're good? No, I don't really get stressed for the throw triple sow. I feel like I can find my feet on it, like no matter what. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't worry me. I'm going to be more stressed in Japan about like, making sure our choreography is tight and organized so it doesn't look like a new program. Like, obviously, we want it to look like good flow, good energy. We don't want to forget the choreography. So uh, Always a plus, yeah. Yeah, the rehearsal, <laughs> the, the three days we have of rehearsals when we get to Japan will be very important for run-throughs. So the men's final tonight, Are yes. you who is going to pull it off? Will it be Hanyu or will it be Nathan Chen? I think it will be Hanyu. Uh, Hanyu, Nathan, sorry. Nathan, okay. <laughs> You She's keeping us that. guessing till the no, end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that he's been extremely reliable the last few competitions. He looks extremely confident um, and on top of himself, on top of his rotation. I have no doubt that he's going to deliver. And he has a huge cushion uh, of a lead. Who's so your... that, that I'm concerned about. I think somebody like completely random is going to win a medal, though. I think Wouldn't Mateo that be fun? Rizzo. I love that. I, I, Ma- I love it, too. I think Matteo Rizzo has been skating really well. And That's he... who I think is going to do it. He has really good, like, all of his elements are good, and I think he looks ready to medal. And he's consistent. He seems to, like, I would have loved it to be Keegan if Keegan had a clean short, but he took himself, like, out of that. Um, yeah. but, like, and also... Honestly, like, personal choice would have been for him to, to seize that moment, but I think the moment is gone. Keegan and Nam seem to have a real bromance, I noticed. Like, I Keegan... Think Keegan has a bromance with, like, everybody, every guy that he's friends with. Keegan just loves everybody. <laughs> He okay. was in the Kiss and Cry, and he was like, oh, I think Nam and I are in the group together. Yeah. And I was like, how do you know that? What yeah. a nice silver lining <laughs> that is, Keegan. Nam yeah. and I are going to be in the same group for the free skate and the free skate practice. And Ralph was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am ready. What else are you looking forward to for the men's final as we, you know? Good question. Um, I mean... The ladies' final group was really, really good today. The pairs' final group, I've never seen all four teams skate that well. So if the whole final group of men could, like, skate clean longs, can you imagine? That would be so exciting. Also, the yeah. dance the dance actually seems like it could be a nail-biter. And I know that this is funny for dance, but they're also close and the top we, eight are within yeah. like you know or i mean from two to eight or something it's like six points or something like, insane yeah not even i think it's three points piper yeah. Miller eighth with 80 and second place has 83 something like that it's i feel crazy. pretty good that gabby and guillaume are gonna win i feel pretty confident <laughs> about it yeah they i know but it would be something crazy to happen not but to. they're coming for them next year with this political move after the rhythm dance they're pretty close they're much Ooh, closer than right just the two Russians are yeah. much closer to the French than I would have thought. But you know, a certain dance expert told Bruno at the beginning of this season that Nikita was going to be the top team this year. Yes. That they had the best programs this year. They so, do have good programs this year. And so I, this this was like in the summer. That, yeah. uh, so they I mean, I think that happened. it's not really a surprise to the people inside the dance world. Yeah. Uh, their rise right now. But... Yeah. Every like kind of top level fours in the short dance. So if that happens again in the free dance, I expect the results to stay somewhat similar because it just becomes preference of the judges. Right. Um, they all get the same levels. The results will probably stay the same or close. And if calls are different or somebody makes a mistake, that's when we're going to see a shuffle. I was, Although I imagine Piper and Paul move up with that free dance because it's yes. a pretty iconic free dance and the judges really let them kind of move forward with it. So it'll be yeah, interesting every to see. Yeah, every free dance, they, they pass a few people, but it's never enough overall. They have to find, like, yeah, a it's massive true. short dance. Yeah. They need to, like, I don't know how you do that, but... I was uh, surprised by the calls in the short dance because it's a really difficult pattern, uh, the tango. And... All season, most of the teams haven't been getting the levels. So it was really a surprise to see them all get it here. And that could just be the caller. Maybe they've all worked their butts off on that pattern. But throughout the year, they've really been nitpicky on all the different... Yeah, which they usually are in, in Ice Dance. Yeah. Like, did you see the calls in the ladies' event today? The ladies' event, I thought... Okay, did you think that the Terzan Bayeva squad was around? Yes. I thought it, that one like, was around. I never even questioned it. 
But there was there was quite a few under rotations that that weren't called in the ladies event. Yeah, especially in the short. I... Under rotation of the top ten. Yeah. In the top ten and no edge call. Vanessa Guzmaroli, not the toughest caller, I have to say. But I... you know what? I kind of like it about her because I think it would be even more baffling if randomly she became a Shinamano type. I <laughs> want Shinamano to do every event. I feel like... I kind of like like his strictness, but... I like I mean, it. he's not calling me, so maybe I can say that. Maybe if he was calling my event, I wouldn't like it. Well, and again, <laughs> as long as it's evenly applied throughout the event yeah. itself, the only time it becomes perplexing is one, you know, toe at the end of a Lutz toe is so clearly under-rotated in one but only dinged on another. It, yeah, it seems exactly. unfair, but when it's strict across the board or lenient across the board, yeah. then I'm Which yeah. today it was. Today it, it was across the board like that. I just, I found it interesting, that trend that they decided to follow, I guess, yeah. like, so to speak. Like um, Mariah Bell's last jump, definitely under. Like there were just a number of things that I saw. Yeah. Today. Um, oh, I think the, the Evgenia's double axle at the end did get called in under. Okay. Yes. Uh, there was one of the very few. Yeah, I I, um, I would like to rewatch some of those in <laughs> question. I thought, but see, sometimes the review wasn't showing the under jump, so I was hoping to see the review after, so I could okay. confirm to myself, like, okay, maybe it was clean or it wasn't, and then I wasn't given the review. To me, but having saw that Shinamano double axle fifty-five times that double axle. Everybody's every double angle. axle. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's double axles were shown. See, to me, Shinamano having him call an event it just feels like what's supposed to happen at the end of a year it's like when you tr when you prepare for the SATs and you train those questions and you know exactly what kind of analogies they're going to give you and what the kinds of questions are and then you see it and you're like yes <laughs> that is why I went to that SAT prep course and I did <laughs> and maybe yeah. he's going to call world team trophy maybe I, we're, like you're still going to get him I am such a fan I have to say <laughs> I uh, he, I feel like he answers all of our questions. Like, is that what's <laughs> like? I mean, I do enjoy his his direct calling as well. I yes, we need him at every event. I would. I think it's a benefit. You then you know how your elements are going to be going forward. What you need to fix. So yeah. Well, what was your moment of the pairs free skate? What would you say or the pair event overall? Good question. I mean, Schween hands long, obviously, and I was really happy that they could, they could skate clean and win. I, I, maybe my moment was, was Shri and Han's triple sow side by side. That was like That's the one. That's a good moment. moment. Yeah. That, that was, was like, a, yeah. that was really like, oh, they did it. Oh my God, what's happening? They're going to win. Um, maybe that. Good question. You know, I really like um, Boykova and her partner. I mean, it's not my moment of the competition, but I do really, really enjoyed their energy. And I think watching them like, makes me believe in a really bright future for them. So I, I enjoyed that as well. I trust Tamara. I, I believe in her. So I do too. You know what kind of makes me wonder, like, do I like them so much because I like her? Like, do, am I just rooting for, it's for them? It's very possible. Like, it, <laughs> maybe that's it. I don't know. Well, why not? Why yeah. not? I, feel like I root just, for Tracy like, Wilson. She just deserves another chance. Yeah. At, at skating, success in skating. Jonathan, what was your moment? The choreographic sequence near the end of Swan Han's um, free skate. I just wrote dollar signs all over it. <laughs> it was just that's, my, that's one of my favorites too. The lift, choreo lift at the end of their long. Just ridiculous. So you're probably going to hate this. And I know that it's it's uh -huh. more flash than substance. I still love Sui and Han's mini lift before their throw that they do every time when her straight. It's just how she turns her head and does it that makes it Is so it a throw style? Yes, every time. I love it. But I love yeah. the rest of their program as well. So we want so to know. Like we've all agreed that they are the moment of the Fairs event. Yes, they just. So. <laughs> and they were apparently off the ice for 10 days and they came back and skated so well. So. And like, and didn't was... look out of breath at the end of their long and under trained at all. But their coach told us that they were not prepared and not trained. Do you think like, that was, was a mind game? Oh, just trying to trick everybody? I wonder. Or psych out the competition? It could be. And I think this was a, this was a tough. Um, fan kind of event because so many people were very earnestly rooting for Vanessa and Morgan. Yes. So that was a devastating kind of turn. But for this to be such a beautiful story to come out of it yep. is, is really nice. Like I just wrote like, you know, everything's going to be okay. 
Yeah. Like Shui and Han remind me that everything in the world is going everything to be okay. fine. <laughs> I have a bone to pick yeah. with some of our Japanese fans on Instagram. They didn't like Shui and Han? They didn't post their practice videos. We saw every double axel that Zagitova and Medvedeva did in uh, practice, and we saw nothing of Shui and Han. There was one video of them just like skating forwards in unison. But I was thinking, like, how are they skating? How are they practicing? They were off the ice. I really was kept looking for it. We didn't get to see it. So yeah, Paris and Ice Dance isn't as popular over there. Like the the fan base gravitates more to the ladies and the men's event. I wanted to see those practice videos. So next time they're gonna have to bring it for us. But we oh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on our recap. Megan, it's so Megan. good to yeah. see you. Thank you, you guys. Good. And yeah. safe travels to Japan. Thank yeah. you. So hold an edge and look sexy, everyone. <laughs>